and welcome back to our lesson on choosing an appropriate data display. And now we're going to get into identifying and recognizing misleading data. It's done all the time, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody can take data and present it in a way that is very misleading. And why do you think they would do that? Because they want you to think a certain way. They're trying to get you to believe what they're saying about the data. Okay, they're trying you to trying to get you to fall into their trap and thinking that it's what they say it is versus what it really is when you look at the whole picture. So we're going to explain why the data display is misleading. So I take a look at this. It says box office revenue. We're talking about total revenue in billions. Notice it says billions of dollars and it, um, for each year. So if we look at the graph, we got 2005 is around 9 billion, 2006 is up to 9 point something. And as it goes, it looks like that over the course between 2005 and 2012, that the box office revenue has really gone up. As we can see, that it has a very upward trend. However, if you notice one thing on this graph that can cause graphs to be extremely misleading, it's this thing right here. It's a break in the graph. And what this break in the graph does is it makes it look like the graph is increasing at a much higher rate than it really is. To put it into real words, the vertical axis has a break that begins at 8. Makes it appear that the total revenue increased rapidly between 2005 and 2009. And that's not necessarily true when you're talking billions of dollars. We're talking billions. So if they had a more reasonable looking graph, it might look like this. So starting at zero and going up to the nine, 10 and $11 billion, you'll notice that now it's much flatter. It doesn't make it look like it has such a rapid increase in the revenue. Okay. Now if they wanted this first one, if they wanted this first one right here to actually be more realistic, and they wanted to go by $1 billion at a time, they would have then started right down here at zero and gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then, of course, it would have started where? The graph would have been right here. And it had all this blank space down here. And they would have said, whoa, it really didn't increase by much. Okay? So this is very misleading, that first one, because of the break in the vertical axis which causes it to look like there's a rapid increase. That's just one way graphs can be misleading. Another way is right here. Take a quick look at this. Again, concert ticket prices. Okay, a concert ticket price. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when they're using bars or pictures or something like that, that means that the bar should be roughly what? Yeah, it should be the same size. And so as you notice between A, B, and C, not only does it, it get higher, obviously the ticket price for the concert in A was 40, the ticket price in C is only just above 50, but then they make this big, huge ticket, they make C look super large compared to A, and really between 40 and what, 53, $54, that's not a huge difference. But to look at the pictures in there, what they might be using those tickets at bars, that, that can really do it. Also, again, the break in the vertical axis to, to make it look like the difference between $40 and $54 or so is much greater than the difference really, really is. So here the ticket varies and the tickets vary in the width and the break in the vertical axis makes the difference and ticket prices appear to be greater. So, ladies and gentlemen, one more. Again, here's some real bars and not ones that look like tickets. So what do you notice in these? Yeah, there's no break in the vertical axis, but once again, you can see as the year increases, what happens to the width of the bar? That's right, the width of the bar is getting greater. So the bars become wider as the years progress, making the increase in the profit appear to be much greater, when in actuality, this one's just above 10 and this one's just less than 15. So really it didn't increase that much, but the size of the bar makes it look like there was much more progress in the making of profit. All right. Our last, our, our quick right here, um, number two, 
explaining why the data in this display is misleading, so you'll want to take a quick look at it. And I'm going to point out, notice this is what type of display? Yeah, it's a pictograph. And our pictograph does have to have a key that explains what each picture represents. So notice that each picture represents two days. They represent the same amount. If not, then they would be misleading. <coughs> Excuse me. So take a quick look at that and see what you think. And of course, we will come back in class and we will discuss it in class so that you have a great understanding as to why this pictograph is extremely misleading. Ladies and gentlemen, misleading graphs, you want to look at those vertical axes, you want to look at the size of the pictures, the size of the bars, all these things that make things very misleading. Of course, is there other ways to do misleading data? You bet there are. Okay? They can present things any way they want you to get to think how they want you to think. So we just can't cover them all. We're just going to cover the brief ones for now. Ladies and gentlemen, finish your quick write. We're all done with the votes, uh, excuse me, the notes. We're all done with the notes for chapter nine. Ladies and gentlemen, always a pleasure. I will see you in class tomorrow.